hello guys and welcome to this webinar so we we, we are uh, continuing with this same webinar called uh, uh, dynamic uh, uh, dns and dhcp uh, let us continue in today's uh, session uh, what is dynamic dns it is a very small session to understand what is dynamic dns and how uh, DHCP works with uh, Active Directory which means integration integration DNS and DHCP with the Active Directory so this is the topic today so before that I have to have a setup called uh, DC with the DNS so I should have one computer running with the DC and DNS but that uh, computer is running with uh, 172.30.0.10 IP it is running with the DC DNS DHCP let's have a look on it so this is a computer I have which uh, running with Active Directory let's go and check and confirm what active directory is running here we have active directory users and computers tools if you are new to this please watch our previous videos to understand uh, what type of uh, i mean uh, what is active directory how dns we have so many videos and if you click here this is acascloud.com we have only one user called administrator if you look at domain controllers server one is a domain controller now what I want to show you if we go back to start menu and search for uh, D DNS when I open DNS in that DNS we have to understand if you expand it forward lookup zone you can see one zone called uh, acastloud.com in that we have one record related to server whatever server domain controller that record has been created automatically during installation and configuration of AD is it clear now what I have to do is I open DHCP console because I have installed DHCP in the same PC but uh, having separate DHCP server is always best practice why because if anything happens to domain controller or DNS so your DHCP server will be down so it is not at all a best practice to install DHCP DNS and active directory in all which, which means all services running in one server is not a best practice but today I just wanted to uh, tell few things about this that's why I installed here so what I have to do I expand this I don't see any uh, scope here because if you watch our previous video you will understand what are the database of uh, DNS DHCP how to create how to take backup this is a, a content we have if you are new to this please watch the previous videos to understand in detail about DNS and DHCP related topic but today we are going to integrate how it is integration happen so what I have to tell here is if I go back to my computer so I install DHCP I install DC I install DNS all come all services in one server that's okay fine but however when you install uh, DNS and DHCP with the DC DHCP must authorized with the domain so you should authorized DHCP server with the domain in domain otherwise if you create a scope now it is not going to configure which means it is not going to provide any IP address to any client because it should not you know 
it should authorize before working with the DHCP. What is authorization? Uh, what is authorization? Authorization, it is a process of what is DHCP authorization. DHCP authorization, it is a process. It's a process of DHCP server. It's a process of DHCP server in the domain when when you have DHCP server in domain. It's a process of DHCP server in the domain which allows DHCP server which allows DHCP server to provide to provide IP addresses to domain clients do you understand domain client what I can do is I will use one example to make you understand how this process works let's go here imagine this is a, a training a training center imagine this training center called ecoscloud.com so here mm, so ecoscloud.com we have so many students here in ecoscloud we have so many students and uh, if you are the trainer let's take it's me not you it's me it's me if I am a trainer I came into a cast cloud and I want to provide a training to a cast cloud if I want to uh, give training to a cast cloud students what I have to do I have to authorized in a cast cloud I have to authorized in a cast cloud uh, to start training which means to give training for a cast cloud students I am not going to provide student not going to provide training for non ECAS cloud students. So if I want to provide a training there should be ECAS cloud student and when I want to provide training so they should be authorized in students and ECAS cloud should allow me to train students. So which means what here imagine the ECAS cloud is nothing but a domain cast cloud is nothing but a domain who are they students are nothing but clients clients who I am I am DHCP server imagine I am DHCP server when I want to provide IP addresses to domain clients I must authorize into domain who should allow me to take classes in a cast cloud there somebody should be there right somebody should be there which means who is somebody here here is administrator administrator who is administrator who controls this domain so if I want to provide as a DHCP server if I want to provide IP addresses to clients so what I have to do I have to allow sorry sorry admin has to allow me to take classes admin has to take admin has to authorize to allow to take or to provide DHCP uh, IP addresses you understand this right if you have any queries regarding this post your uh, queries in comment session so that I will answer your all the queries so which means it's a process of allowing DHCP server to provide IP addresses to domain clients okay so how to authorize it is a very simple trick <coughs> only simple option for that what you have to do you have to do you just go to uh, DHCP uh, console you right click on it right click on it and say authorize say authorize that's all that's all so to authorize to authorize this 
that computer should be a member of domain that's a condition the computer which you have it should be a member of domain it is if it is not a member of domain you cannot authorize into um, by default domain controller is already a member of domain then if you are using a separate computer act as a dscp server that computer should be a authorized which means should be a member of domain to provide ip addresses to domain clients so this is called dscp authorization after that you can start working with that let's go back we go here we start creating scope new scope next i will create some uh, scope name i say uh, 172 or sales network sales network next start ip address we can say 172. Dot 30.0.100 again 172.30.0.150 this is a starting and end range i will go next i i have already explained you what is exclusions and all if you want to know all this you please watch our previous videos to know about more about it we'll go next and further next I don't want to give any extra options here I just simply give next and okay so this is my scope so I can start providing IP addresses to clients for that what I will do I will go here to C2 which is my client computer if I want to make the member of domain before I will have to get IP address from the uh, domain what I do here is I will go here I'll I will go and check manually let me make the computer to domain member first after that we will see kind of 30.0.10 that's a preferred dns which i am providing manually uh, let's see what happens it is so i will go here sys dm.cpl this command to bring my computer here i will say akascloud.com here i used to set administrator password it says welcome to domain i'll click okay and close and restart now it is getting restart what happens one day we have discussed in detailed about what's happening in the background um how the query goes uh, how the query come back now it is getting restart in meanwhile what i can do is i can go to uh, computer 1 to check what update has been done till now if i go here i refresh in computers i can see server 2 is a object created uh, for server 2 which is for uh, client pc if i refresh in domain you see one record has automatically no dynamically updated in dns if you click here address leases refresh mm, till we don't have any leased ip address because we have we provided a manual static ip address to this client now what i do i will just log in to this computer with the administrator once i log in into it now what i will do i will get ip address from dhcp see what happens 
so in previously see this class uh, aim to make you one point very clear when you have manual static IP address you made this computer into member of domain that DNS has updated record its own because it is updated it's a dynamic DNS dynamic DNS are updating records dynamically automatically now what I do is I will remove this IP address I will get IP address from DHCP server let's see things uh, how it works I don't know maybe the, it may come from a different address let's see now I will go to the client PC I will go to run and I will type ncpa.cpl command to go inside the NICOD properties I will go and check all this from getting IP address so after configuration of this everything I wanted to check I wanted to check in command prompt what IP address currently it has if I check IP address slash all typo mistake see guys what we have uh, I got uh, IP address from ecoscloud.com let me change the fonts for better visibility see guys here we have IP v4 address which is 100 and this is a, a subnet mask and this is the date and time today which is 521 which we get IP address obtain expired date is next is 8 days and this is a DSCP server and DNS server will be there and uh, yeah remaining things are there ok done uh, la, what, what I have to do I will go and check back in server 1 if I go to DNS console and refresh sorry sorry DSCP console refresh I see one list server 2 is DSCP done fine if I go in DNS console DNS console refresh I see one record has been updated what time it is 430 actually it has to update the record it's not a 430 it has to be 530 okay leave that so what I'm trying to say previously DNS itself updated record now as per the DHCP request now DNS is record updating so what the DHCP tells to DNS see your client got this IP address from me please update record in your database will DNS accept that request from DHCP yes it is accept why because DHCP is authorized to authorized to DHCP server in the domain so that's why it simply accepts so uh, nothing that uh, this is how the DHCP and DNS works together to uh, build a, a scenario you know uh, this is how it works this is a very common and very s simple topic which we had our next topic will be about uh, something new which how to manage all the three which means how to manage multiple DHCP servers multiple DNS servers in a uh, one based which means by using one uh, what service we have to manage all in one place that is called IPAM that is called IPAM IP address management IPAM IPAM is one of the new feature in 2012 2012 R2 OS we will understand how to implement IPAM how to configure IPAM and what benefits and what advantages we will be having with IPAM so that's all for today's class and we will see next week thank you